Hello, KJ7E here. I'm going to do another IMD transmitter test on the FTDX 101MP. Why? Well, I changed the uh, VRF 150 finals. I broke one, and well, that's a subject for a whole other video. I explain um, how I did it and also the biasing adjustments in the radio. But I was curious, after I went through and rebiased everything and installed a new match set of, of uh, MRF, I'm sorry, VRF-150 finals, how what's my IMD, transmit IMD look like? Did it change at all? So let's measure it. So here's the test setup. Got the FTDX-101MP using a 10 output one, which is going directly to a uh, coupler for my LP500 power meter. Output of that, then feeds into this RF sampler and then into this little bird dummy load. RF sampler feeds into this 10 dB pad into the spectrum analyzer. And the spectrum analyzer is currently set up uh, center frequency, it's 20 hertz. The analyzer is about 20 hertz off, so have it uh, offset in here. So 14.20002. And then my span, 20 kilohertz, uh, 100 hertz resolution bandwidth, and 100 hertz visual bandwidth. Okay, so with all that said, let's uh, turn the radio power down here to five watts. And for tone, I uh, generated two ultra pure tones at 700 hertz and 1900 hertz using Adobe Audition. And if we zoom in the tone, you'll see the, here's the intermixing of the two tones. And they're playing right now. It comes out USB into the USB input of the radio. The radio um, stays in the digital domain, uh, digital audio, all the way to the digital analog converter before it being fed into the uh, RF section of the radio. So it's about as clean and pure as you're gonna get. So we're not introducing any distortion products from uh, mic uh, preamplifier circuits or anything else. So the EQ on the radio is turned off and uh, it does not matter what the transmit band pass is set to in the radio because both tones, 700 hertz and 1900 hertz, are within any of the selectable band pass. So you could be in TTBF mode or you could be in the 400 to 2600 hertz um, band pass, makes no difference. So we're gonna hit transmit here. So you can see we're making five watts, 4.5 watts PEP output. And you'll start to see our um, signals here. So this is the carrier at 14.2, and then we have our first tone, which should be at 700 hertz, and the second tone at 1900 hertz. So let's add a couple markers here. So, so I don't have to just transmit a little bit of view. Turn that off. So marker, we'll set marker one at 14.20002. Megahertz, so that's my carrier point. Marker number two, we'll set that, so go, let's go to peak, uh, right peak, let's, oh, hang on, that was right there, perfect. Okay, and let's say delta to one, okay, which is showing up, it found the peak at 693 hertz, it should be 700, so let's just make it 700, okay. And then let's add another marker, marker three. Uh, we'll go delta relative to one, and that should be at 1900 hertz. There we go. Uh, so we have some markers now. Um, let's add another marker, marker number four. Let's put that down here on the, that's IM3, this is IM5. And I'll show you the math and how that's calculated uh, so marker four, uh, delta relative to one. Let's, instead of making it relative to one, let's make it relative to one of the carrier. And there's a reason for that, because we want to see what the delta is between our carrier power and the IMD products. So uh, delta relative to three. And we'll go peak. We'll go right peak, right peak, there it is. We'll add one more for IM5. Marker five, uh, peak, 
All right, 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 right. There we go. And we're going to say uh, delta relative to 3. Okay. So you can see right off the bat our two tones at 701.9. And we have the deltas relative to the tone uh, minus 39 dB, so almost 40 dB for IM3. And almost 60 dB, so 58.8 dB for uh, IM5. Okay, not bad. So that's with five watts. So let's go back to trace and we'll go back to clear right. We'll transmit again. And now I'm going to increase the power and we'll watch what happens to the IMD. And we'll try to find worst case. And we're at uh, 190, 202 watts now. So we're at 202 watts, full output. Okay, let's go to um, average. So we'll just average that. And then view, stop transmitting. Let's take a look here, what do we got? So we're showing minus 34.6 dB for IM3 and minus 40.9 dB. Now it's dBC. Now it's different than what ARRL does. I'll explain that here in a minute. Um, let's see here, here's my notes. Okay, so what I did was, I've jotted down some notes here. Let me zoom in over there, there we go, I zoomed in. So we have F1 of 700 hertz, F2 of 1900 hertz. And you compute IM3 is on the low side of the carrier, two times F1 or two times 700 minus F2 or 1900 equals minus 500 Hertz. And the high side, two times F2, which is 1900 minus F1 at 700 equals 3100 Hertz. So let's, let's see if that's really the case. So we'll do, we'll add yet one more marker, marker number six relative to one delta relative to one and we'll use that to tune around and you can see that displayed right here marker six and this is reference to my carrier point um, now let's go here to this first peak look at that at 3.1 kilohertz so the math agrees now now it should say IMD5 should be at 4.3 kilohertz so let's go up there There it is, and look at that, 4.29, or basically 4.3 kilohertz. Now on the low side, it should be at minus 500 and minus 1700. So let's go down there. And there is the peak at minus 500. And let's find the next one down. So this would be low side IM5 at 1.7. So just like the math says here, that's where we found them. Now, something that's really important here. I'm measuring DBC. So, I am three products relative to F2. That's important because ARRL uses I am three measurements DBPEP or single tone, which equals a 6 dB better or lower IMD number than what we're seeing here. That's because a single tone carrier will be 6 dB stronger than the two-tone carrier. And they reference that stronger carrier to the two-tone IMD3 uh, and IMD5 products. So uh, this number, minus 34.6, would actually be minus 40.36 in the ARRL scheme. And minus 40 would be minus 46.9. Uh, versus minus 40.9. So that is a really good uh, IMD number. Now I'm only testing on, on, on 20 megahertz, uh, or I'm sorry, 20 meters, 14 megahertz right here. But I'll go through and, and test all the bands and see where, and, and just see where that runs out. I just wanted to demonstrate uh, quickly how you can do this and, 
and uh, how to make sense of some of the some of the numbers you're seeing in some of the some of the um, uh, waveforms here on the spectrum analyzer. Anyways, see you later.